God's timing is perfect. He knows exactly what to do, how to do it, when to do it. Let's talk about that today out of the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 11. New Living Translation is what I'll read for your hearing today. Let's go to the word. Yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart, but even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. Ecclesiastes 3 and 11, New Living Translation, the grass withers, flowers fade, but the word of God stands forever and ever and ever. I want to talk about the beauty of God's timing. Ecclesiastes 3 and 11 reflects on the profound nature of God's sovereignty and the beauty of his perfect timing. The verse begins with the recognition that everything in creation, both the good and the difficult, unfolds according to God's plan and purpose. And that is its own timing. It carries a certain beauty. And God is perfecting according to his desire in his time. This truth invites you and I to trust in God's timing and to rest assured that even when we cannot fully comprehend the purpose behind each season of life, we can be assured that God is up to something, that God has a plan, that there is an end in mind. And God knows the end from the beginning. The second part of the verse talks about the unique way in which God has placed a sense of eternity in the human heart. This means that our hearts, unlike other creatures, have an innate, innate, innate awareness of something greater than our human immediate existence, a yearning for the eternal, a desire for something greater something beyond the scope of now. It is the divine restlessness that drives us to seek meaning, purpose, and reconnection with the Creator. It is our desiring and our desire to get back to where we once were with God. Even though the process is difficult, it is important to have an eternal perspective we are limited in our understanding, but when we have an eternal perspective, our longing, our yearning, and our desire becomes greater than the things of the world. We are unable to grasp the full scope of God's work and God's plan from beginning to end. We're limited in our finite thinking. Uh, our humanity calls for faith, and it calls for trusting and believing in God, and it is also a reminder while we may not always understand the why behind what God is doing, the why behind his plan and the why behind his purpose. We know that if we trust him, that he is orchestrating everything for our good. That is the believer's solitude. That is the believer's understanding that God knows what's best, that he sees our lives and knows exactly what he's doing. He is ordering and orchestrating and organizing everything according to his perfect will and plan. And so we, we, we rest assured that we trust that we believe that and we stand upon that principle. And so here are some key things to focus on in these verses. First of all, God's timing is perfect. Everything in life, both joys and sorrows unfold according to God's plan. And in the right season, they will reveal true beauty. Secondly, eternity in the human heart. Humans have a deep yearning for God. We have a deep yearning for God's presence. We have a deep yearning for the awareness of eternity and a longing for more than just what this life offers. Our desire is beyond the scope of this world. We are planning, whether you recognize it or not, we're planning for our eternity. Every day of our lives, we're planning for what's to come. Then number three, there's limited understanding. Although we sense eternity, we cannot fully grasp God's work in eternity, requiring faith and trust in his wisdom and 
his plan, knowing that he understands and sees far more than we will ever know and far more than we will ever see. And so as children of God, we are encouraged to rest in God's timing and to trust his plan, knowing that he knows what's best, even when it is beyond our scope of understanding and knowledge, that he has a keen idea and a keen sense of what he's doing. And his will is perfect. His timing is perfect. His plan will unfold to perfection. And so here are uh, a few to take away from this verse. First of all, we've got to trust God's timing in complete form. We know his timing is perfect, but we've got to trust it. We must trust God's timing. Life can often fuel uncertainty with periods of waiting, challenges, or unanswered prayers. But this verse, Ecclesiastes 3 and 11, reminds us to trust that God is working everything out beautifully in his own time, completely in his own time. He is perfecting everything according to his will and plan. This teaches us patience and perseverance, knowing that God sees the bigger picture, sees things that we cannot see and understands things that we will never understand. And so we are encouraged to turn over the reins of control and to trust his perfect timing, even when things don't make immediate sense in our lives knowing that God is greater and bigger than we can ever imagine. But then secondly, we've got to live with an eternal perspective. Live as if we recognize that there is a such thing as eternity, that this is temporary, this life is temporary, but the life to come is going to be eternal. The sense of eternity that God has placed in our hearts serves as a constant reminder that this world is not our final destination. It encourages us to focus on what is eternal rather than getting caught up in the temporary struggles or pursuits of life. The, 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 the eternal perspective helps to guide our priorities, motivating us to live for God and to live according to God's plan and to subscribe to God's kingdom living here on earth, recognizing that our living and our relationship is investing in our future and pursuing things that have lasting value as opposed to things that have only temporary earthly value. But then we also have to recognize that we have limited understanding. And as, as humans, as earthly beings, we often want answers to why the whys of our lives, the struggles of our lives, why certain things happen and why prayers go unanswered and why suffering exists. However, this verse encourages us to embrace our humanity, knowing that God, God's ways are higher than our ways. God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And just as the heavens are above the earth, so are his thoughts above our thoughts and his waves above our waves, ways. That's Isaiah 55 and verses 8 and 9. Instead of trying to understand and figure out what God is doing, we are called just to trust his wisdom and remember that his plan is far greater than we can ever comprehend. He is working on completing the plan. He is working on completing the process. He is working on perfecting us. We must rest assured that he knows precisely what he's doing. He knows what peace fits. He knows what challenge is necessary. He knows what difficulty we must uh, experience. He knows everything. We've got to trust in his timing. If we can think about a masterpiece, a master painter, or working on a grand masterpiece, uh, from an outsider's perspective, <laughs> as we're looking at the work in progress, we don't see <clears throat> or understand how it's going to come together. It becomes very unclear unto us when it's unfinished. In fact, it, it appears a little chaotic. We don't see the end in sight. But the artist knows exactly what he's painting. And so even when the canvas is blank, he sees what he wants to project onto the, cam on the, onto the canvas. He sees what he wants to make the painting into. And so even from a blank 
vantage point. He knows where he's headed and he knows what he's going to do. He knows how and what to do to make a blank canvas into a thing of beauty. Similarly, God is painting the canvas of our lives. And, and although we may not see the beauty in every brush stroke, we can trust that he is working and he is leading us to something wonderful and he is preparing us for something greater than our mind can conceive. It's like a seed that is being planted in the soil. It takes time for the seed to germinate. It takes time for it to sprout up and grow into a plant. And the thing about it, it does more underneath the ground before it appears above the ground. There is work that is taking place. It is becoming seeded and rooted in the ground. It is becoming nurtured and, and nourished. It is developing beneath the ground before it even appears on the surface. Sometimes it takes time to break through, revealing its true beauty. Sometimes even as it begins to grow, you don't see the beauty for an extended period of time. This is how God's timing often works in our lives. He's preparing us. He's working us. It's silent, and sometimes it appears inactive, but he's preparing us for something far greater, far beautiful, far beyond our human comprehension. And so Ecclesiastics 3 and 11 encourages us to trust God's grand design, despite our limited perspective. We don't see the whole picture, but we've got to trust that God sees and knows. We must not, uh, we may not rather understand everything now, but we are assured that God is making everything beautiful in his time. Our hearts are tuned on eternity, which helps us to live with purpose and hope, understanding that we're only here temporarily, and that through life's uncertainties that God is perfecting us. While we cannot see the full scope of what God is doing, his work, his will, his plan, his knowledge, God is always working on our lives for his glory and for our ultimate good. And so we're challenged in this verse to live in faith, to trust and believe God, trust God's timing, and to embrace the hope of eternity and place our hearts and our affections on what God is doing, understanding that God is up to something and he's doing something. He is working his perfect will and perfect plan in the lives of his children. I'm excited about that, that we're a work in progress, and God is doing something excellent in our eyes and in our lives. Thank God for his perfect will and his divine plan. Share the word with someone. Someone needs to know today that God is working on their lives and that God is perfecting and making them into what he desires them to be. Thank God for the word. Let's go to God in prayer. God, thank you that your hand is up on us, and as the potter shapes the clay, as the artist paints the brush strokes, as the architect continues to build and design, you're working on our lives, and we're grateful that you're a master designer. You know exactly what you're doing. You know what's needed and necessary. You're perfecting your work and your will within our lives. You're perfecting your plan and your purpose. You're doing something exceptionally great and we're thankful for what you're doing for how you're blessing and how you're moving in our lives continue to work your plan and your purpose work it into perfection we believe that he who has begun a good work in us is going to perfect it that you're going to accomplish that what you set out to accomplish please hear our prayer god we thank you for this day thank you for this weekend for the blessings of sunday and for the blessings of worship all that transpired on yesterday and all the blessings that we were able to be a part of and as well to, to um, share. Thank you for the blessings that you made available unto us and for the opportunity to worship the blessings of the worship experience and all that took place as we shared on yesterday. Thank you so much for your grace and mercy, your divine favor and for blessing us in such a way. We pray now that you'll bless this day as you blessed us on yesterday. Bless us on today. Bless us in our tomorrow. Bless our future and and direct our past. As, as you have guided every day of our lives to, up until this point, we pray that you'll continue to lead us, guide us, and direct us 
steer us away from pitfalls, away from dangers, away from obstacles, away from uncertainty, and allow us to rest in your goodness, your mercy, and your amazing grace. We come today praying as we start this day that you will bless us abundantly. We may not know what the day holds, but we know that you know. You know exactly and precisely what the day holds, and uh, you hold our hand, you guide us, and you lead us. And so we pray that you'll bless us every step of the way, that you would direct our lives. We continue to pray for the people of Florida. We lift them up unto you, praying blessings upon them, recovery, restoration, revitalization, and rejuvenation according to your will and plan. Bless the people of Florida. We ask that you would keep them and sustain them as they come through such unparalleled times. We pray that you will bless them in the name of Jesus the Christ. We ask as well, dear God, that you'll make peace in the world and peace in our land. We continue to pray for the people of Ukraine, lift the people of Pakistan, We're praying for Israel and praying for uh, India, people everywhere, lifting up all of the level of unrest and uncertainty that may be existing in our world and praying, God, that you'll give perfect peace, peace that passes all understanding and that you'll bless us richly in the precious and perfect name of Jesus the Christ. We come today praying for healing, for deliverance, and praying for those that are wrestling with various conditions and seeking you for healing and deliverance. We present every need unto you, knowing that you do all things well. You're a healer, you're a deliverer. You continue to bless and move in our lives, and we're so thankful, so grateful, so blessed by the wonderful things that you continue to do. We, we pray for healing and deliverance, praying for those wrestling with various conditions, cold viruses, flu viruses, COVID, praying for healing and for deliverance, praying for those battling with cancer and those who are survivors of cancer. We've seen you work so many times, we know that you're able, praying for those battling with heart disease and surviving various conditions, mental health issues, uh, the aging seniors, our children, praying for those going through domestic violence and uh, praying for peace and for uh, a opportunity to break free and to break forth into newness of life. We pray blessings in the name of Jesus the Christ, praying for uh, the ones with handicaps and special needs or um, we lift them up unto you. We pray for the homeless and we pray blessings upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. Lifting up Coach, Coach Jessica Rich, and we're praying for her family, praying blessings upon her and healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus the Christ. Breakthrough in the precious name of Jesus. Praying for Coach Jessica. Praying for Van Drummond, Greta and Eric. Lifting up Susan and John Powell. Praying for um, Veronica, Ben, Jake, Violet, Foster. Praying that Violet is doing well. Lifting up Yandy Kyles. Praying for Stan and Tony Oak, Shirley and Marvin Rosen. Praying for Relina and her son. Blessings for her son, healing and deliverance. And lifting up Jane and thank God for Jane and being a part of worship on yesterday. Lifting up Lisa and Terry and praying for um, Ken as well. Uh, lifting up Ken in a special way, praying blessings upon Ken. Praying for Ms. Betty Sims, Stan and Renee. Joe Grant, Pastor A.C. Stapleton, Pastor Donald Parson, Pastor H.F. Johnson, Pastor Luther Williams, Pastor Albert Haynes, Pastor Teal Barrett Jr., Pastor Al Sampson, Pastor Robert E. Walker, Pastor Eshawn Williams, praying for Deacon Williams, praying for Pastor Kevin Workman, Pastor William McKinley Jackson, Pastor Andre Love, Pastor um, Daryl Horton, Pastor Aaron Reynolds, Pastor Byron Jackson, Pastor Fabian Jacko, who we were blessed to be with on yesterday. Praying blessings, continued favor upon that church and pastor. Praying for the pastor, praying for the family, Pastor Till Williams, as he was laid to rest on this past week. We pray for that family, continued blessings for them. Pastor and Sister Eddie Brown in Fort Worth, Elder and Sister King, Deacon and Sister Jackson, praying for Deacon Jackson as he is in the hospital, when in the hospital over the weekend, we're praying blessings upon him, praying for Sylvester Sampson, blessings to that family, lifting up Ronald and Yvonne Cartwright, Dorothy Smith, Roy Williams, 
good to see him on yesterday as well. Thank God for Roy. Praying for him and his family, his wife and mother. God bless. God watch over them. Praying for Anthony Johnson, lifting up Scott and breaking free hope, restored missions, all in the family ministries, Texas Muslims Women's Foundation, Adventure and Victory. Praying for families everywhere, families that are part of our church, families that we have encountered. We lift them up unto you. Praying blessings upon them. Praying for Cassandra and Joseph Igana. Shannon, lifting Shannon up. God be with Shannon and bless her. Praying for Cynthia Garrett and her family. Pray blessings upon her children. Praying for Ife Eicher and Deanne Ramos. Elsie Everhart. God be with Elsie. Bless her. Be with Kathy and as well with Pete. Praying for Doris Harris, Shalene Wright, Linda Bird, Sandra Thornton, Mother Rock, Samuel Barrett, Rahul Musafa, Derek Stringley, Kenneth Fabian, India, Matt, Calvin Peterton, Denise T. Fairley, Darius Timmons, Terry Hornsby, Wendy Doty. Praying for all of those that are at the Heritage that we are blessed to pastor and shepherd. Bring blessings upon them. Praying for Timothy Cliff, Cameron Foley. Lifting up again my family as always. Praying for my children and as well. Praying for my wife, Nicolette, Colette, Irvin, and Nadia, for blessings upon each of them, divine favor, and pray, God, that you'll keep them, keep us all in perfect peace, that as we keep our minds and our hearts stayed on thee. We trust you for all things, God. We know that you're able to do anything but fail. Continue to bless our lives. Continue to sustain us and keep us by your might and by your power in the precious name of Jesus the Christ. We as well pray that this week will be a strong week, a week filled with blessings, a, will, a, a week filled with new opportunities, new privileges, expansion of our territory, enlarging our territory, entering into new facets of your life and new facets of, of blessing, new facets of opportunity according to your will and plan. Have your way within us. We pray that you would keep us in the name of Jesus the Christ. We trust you for all things, know that you do all things well. So we ask and pray in the name of Jesus the Christ that you would order our steps, bless our lives, keep us and sustain us in the precious and perfect name of Jesus the Christ. If you do these things, God, we'll, we'll, we will be careful to give you praise, glory, and honor both now and forever and ever and evermore. It's in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ we ask these blessings and we thank you for hearing us and answering us. It's in, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank the Lord. Blessings to you, Pastor Irvin and Barrett. And again, how thankful we are to start this day. This is Time with God, morning prayer and devotion. I'm Pastor Irvin and Barrett, praying that you have an amazing and a fantastic day, that the blessings of God surround you and the favor of God rest upon you in every way. Pray that God moves mightily in your life and that God uses you today to be a blessing unto someone else. We'd love to hear from you, Pastor Irvin Lynn Barrett uh, at AOL.com, as well any through any of the social media platforms. We'd love to hear from you. We'd be blessed to communicate with you and connect with you. Have an amazing day. God be with you is my prayer. Please know nothing's going to happen to you today that God has not equipped you and prepared you to handle. He's given you every tool and every resource that you need for success and favor. So trust God, believe God, have faith in God. Know that God's got everything under control. Be blessed, Pastor Irvin and Barrett said. Have an amazing day. God be with you. It's my prayer.